microphone. So my name is Ed Weiss. I'm the Refuge and Lines Manager for the department in uh, Region 2 and Region 4. Um, and then uh, Tom Griffin is our Sanctuary Manager out at McNeil and Tony Cunningham is an assistant out there and Drew is a guide. Uh, they all will operate as guides out there. And they'll get up here in a short bit and provide you with some more detailed information. I'm going to kind of go over some of the initial stuff for sanctuary management, uh, refuge information, how they were created, etc. Um, a few things that we got planned for this year, and then we'll get in, jump into the fun stuff. Uh, so the uh, refuges and sanctuaries and critical habitats are all based on uh, the Constitution, basically two sections. That's reserved, you know, fish and wildlife for people and then allow the legislature to create uh, special areas. Um, those special purpose sites are basically broken down into four or five different categories, that being state parks, state forests, multiple use areas, and then the state refuge system, which is the department manages, and that constitutes state game refuges, critical habitat areas, and sanctuaries. All together, there's 32 acres uh, with about 3 million acres. Um, this is a map that shows the areas throughout the state. Most of them are clustered in South Central and Southwest Alaska. Um, of those, the uh, refuges, there's 12 units. Uh, critical habitat areas are 17 units. There's also a sliding scale of the level of protection within the refuges and has the most um, multiple uses allowed on it. Critical habitat areas is the next down, which allows some multiple uses, but it also provides for a greater level of protection of those areas. And then uh, the following thing which material falls into is the sanctuaries, which is our highest level of protection. And there's three of those throughout the state. Uh, the Dale Stan Price and then the Yellow Silence. Uh, our program here in uh, South Central Southwest uh, manages both Walter Simons and McNeil, and then the stand prices managed predominantly on the Southeast office. So, in order to manage these areas, uh, we create management plans for them through the public process, uh, going out to the public, groups like Friends of McNeil and then the general public to get comments on what they want to see in the area, how we want to see it managed, and how we develop those plans. Uh, the has got a current plan. There's several of them that don't have current plans. We are working on developing those. Um, but in the interim, they were managed based on the creating the statutes and regulations. So a number of uh, management issues that we typically encounter on all of these areas. Um, the predominant thing that we're aiming for is fish and wildlife protection and public use, but we get along with that, we get a lot of problem uses like dumping and public use and our building it in tree cutting, et cetera. And we also manage most of the areas for multiple uses. Um, and maybe some familiar with areas like Sioux Flats and where we've got oil and gas development and the trading bays had some timber done down there and so on. We do manage for multiple uses. However, we try to place a priority on fish and wildlife protection and hunting and fishing and public access in those areas. Well, this is just some photos illustrating some of those problem things we've had. Most of these were within the Anchorage area, uh, the closer you get to the populated areas, the more no problems you tend to have. Um, the reason I bring these up is, uh, aside from just letting things know that these things occur, the importance of 
the community is different at all. So we Tom Paul has had kinds of people on there too. They do a big part of helping out with these things. These are all things we have um, community groups and friends groups, uh, and just general public volunteers that come in and help uh, do things. This up the left corner there was a big cleanup that we did out of Peace Bay where the um, Alaska Guard came out and a big contention out there of vehicles and stuff helped get that cleaned up and we had a number of friends group working in Palmer Hay Flats and friends of McNeil coming out from the McNeil River and helping out uh, with construction and camp uh, readiness and stuff. So it's been a, a big part of the program and a big help. So coming down to McNeil here, um, it's got a management plan, it's a sanctuary, the primary things that we aim to uh, do there or that it was set up for is for the protection of the bears and bear habitat there and then uh, also protection of the human program. So most of the things that we do there or don't do there or go well there is aimed at protecting these things. And the management plan is set up that way. Um, access is pretty strictly guarded, requires a permit, there's a lot of problems. Because of the popularity of the program, it's, those access permits are going through a lot of the process of each year. Um, with that, I guess we're going to introduce a panel. Griffin, our sanctuary manager, and have him go down. We can move into it. Oh, one more thing before I do that. I so just want to briefly touch on some of the things that we're going to try to accomplish this year. We've got a number of projects. And from year to year, our charities, but this year, we've got a number of things that are either going on or potentially going on. Um, we've got a, an RCS is going to install a snow tell site out there which will provide up-to-date weather information you know, and, you know, for aviators and others, you know, through all the weather in place. And we're going to have that right into it. Uh, other thing we've got going is potentially um, BBC might be coming out for a special filming project out there, although we're still working on and out of that. Um, we've also got some trail work going on in the, in the wetland area there. Parts of it are pretty bushy and get beat up pretty bad just by a few folks walking through it. So we're going to have a NPS, uh, National Park Service trail right now, taking some geo-block and trying to geo-block some of those sections to give a little bit from the walking surface while uh, it's still around. And grass and vegetation as we go through there. And then aside from that, I think we just got the, the normal uh, yearly duties, which I don't want to be little because they were many <laughs> and buried, but uh, Tom, you want to come down and bring, I guess you know I have Tony and Lee coming up here, are they doing a uh, separate section? Anybody got any questions on the management part of it before I sit down? On the cross-pasture, you know, that's part of the Camshack Special Use Act, and that's managed by the state parks. Um, the park within the refuge boundary is managed by us. And the state parks do is that the that cross hash area is a uh, special use area which is sold in the state park. How are you managing sighting? Tell them why it's up here. Um, it's been consistent. We've uh, maintained pretty much status quo for the four years that I've been working on it. Um, we have had a couple of <coughs> project increase type stuff like we built a uh, we built one of the staff gatherings a couple of years ago where we got special funding for that. Um, but our, our year to year budgets remain pretty good. You know, status quo, we've not had any problems out there. Any 